Hello little buns, hello, 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 hi, how are you? <sighs> I woke up this morning and I was like, I feel like sharing some of my best kept secrets. They're not really secrets, I just don't say anything about them, but I'm gonna talk to you today about how I take care of my skin. I've had a long history of problems with my skin, I've had severe acne, I've got scarring still, I've got lots of little things that bother me with my skin, but I, in order to take care of them I've had to learn a lot and try a lot of things out, so I hope that some of my knowledge will help you out. Skin care is the most important tool in having what is considered to be good skin. Now keep in mind, your skin is normal for you because it's your skin, so this is not a video telling you how your skin should be or trying to make you feel bad about your skin. This is just me talking about my skin and what I do to make my skin the way it is. Cool. So all that being said, this is what I do to keep my skin super smooth for makeup application and looking cool in photographs. That's the most important. Before I get into the actual products, I want to clarify that I do have nearly seven years of experience as a skincare consultant, so I'm not just spewing garbage. I actually have a factual and educational basis for what I'm talking about, so you can trust my knowledge. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. The number one most important yet easiest to overdo or underdo or mess up for yourself is cleansing. That's the most important thing that you can do for your skin. The problem is a lot of people will just cleanse their skin and not hydrate or they'll overstrip and then not hydrate enough or they'll not use a cleanser at all because they think that they don't need it because their skin's really dry, but you always, always, always need to be having a cleanser if you have a skincare system. If you don't clean your skin, nothing's going to work properly on top of it. There's a big difference between body wash, face wash, hand soap, and like bar soap. Those, these are very, very different things because the skin on your body and on your face is very different. So it's important, first of all, to be using a product that's made for your face. And if it's not made for your face, it should be extremely gentle. So the skin on your face is actually five times thinner than that of your body, and then the skin around your eye area is five times thinner than the skin on the rest of your face. So it's a big difference in tenderness and suppleness and how easily it's affected. You know what I mean? That's why it's important we remove makeup properly and gently without tearing our skin. I use a lot of waterproof eye makeup, so what I do for that is I just get a little bit of waterproof eye makeup remover on a makeup wipe. This way I use less makeup remover than if I was to put it directly on a cotton pad, and I also use more cheap wipes. So it's just more economic for me to do it this way. I put it on a makeup wipe and I just let it soak. You don't want to pull or tear at the skin because that's going to cause unnecessary damage at a molecular level to your skin. So let's just be gentle, let's be tender, let's just let it soak, let it absorb, and then gently wipe away the makeup and it will come off much easier than if you were scrubbing just with like a makeup wipe or a washcloth. For the rest of my face, I use a cleansing tool. It's, it's more of a brush from a website called Vanity Planet. This is a brush called Spin for Perfect Skin. It's such a cute little marketing tool, I love it. But it's actually a really great product. I've tried a lot of these cleansing tools and brushes, including the higher end ones, and I find there are small differences between each tool, but none of them are really that bad. None of them are going to harm your skin unless you overuse them. This one in particular, it spins, it does not oscillate, so it goes in a full circle, not a half circle, and the brush itself can be coarse, so there's two different brush heads that they send with your brush for the face. There is the normal brush head, which is what I use because my skin is pretty tolerant and is pretty thick, and then there's the delicate brush head for drier or more delicate skin types. It also comes with a body brush that's very large and will, you know, travel much larger distances across your wonderful buttocks, so it's much easier to use than the face brush on your body. That's the only difference there. And the, and the bristles might be coarser. I haven't tried this one yet. And then it also comes with a pumice stone for your little feet if you want to get rid of them crackle rackle rock hard lol feet things. The brush itself spins something like 50 to 100 times a second. I don't know the exact amount, it's not listed anywhere, but it spins very very quickly. This way you get the best possible clean and it's much more efficient than using your hands, which you can only really spin uh, so many times a second because otherwise you'll break the sound barrier or something and you'll just don't do that. That's bad. Because of how fast the brush moves, this one also gives you a light exfoliation. If you use the delicate brush head, you won't get the exfoliation, but it still will give you a nice deep clean. You shouldn't have to put a lot of pressure on the brush. It actually feels a bit like a face massage. It feels really delicate and nice. And it actually tickled me a lot, and I was laughing, and it was ruining my cool face, my cool resting face. But it's okay. Indulge. 
laugh, do whatever you want, it's all good. After you rinse your face, it should be as clean as the day you were born, the cleanest face you've ever had, except you were probably really dirty when you were born because you were covered in bodily fluids, but you understand my point. After cleansing, you have the option of toning your skin. I skip this step because my cleanser is pH balancing, and that is actually what the purpose of toner is. A lot of people think that toner is there to remove the last bits of makeup that your cleanser can't reach, but that's, that's a happy side effect that it does, but it, the real purpose is to balance the acidity of your skin, because if your skin is too acidic, if, there's, if the pH level's off, the products that you use won't work optimally, right? So that's why toning is important, or at least balancing the pH level in some way. So if you want to use a pH balancing cleanser, make sure you look for that information somewhere in the packaging. After toning or not toning, you can use a serum. Serums are different from moisturizers and creams because they penetrate deeper into the skin, down to the lower levels, the layers that nobody goes to, the darkest dungeons of your face and they have a lot more active ingredients in them. So if you think of a cream or a moisturizer, like 80% vehicle, 20% active ingredient, and a serum, like 80% active ingredient, 20% vehicle, I feel like that illustrates it pretty well. A serum by itself is not gonna be hydrating enough for anybody unless you have a really oily skin type because its work is not always and usually is not on the surface of your skin. That's why we put a moisturizer on top of the serum to seal everything in to give you that topical hydration and make sure everything's nice and secure and safe and protected and feeling like butter. My skin is oily, but it's also irritated and acne prone, so I like to use a serum that soothes and calms down any irritation or bumps that I'm experiencing because that's like every day of my life. I top it off with a nourishing cream and a lot of people hold the belief that if you have oily skin you should not use a really rich cream because your skin's already really oily. But here's the scoop, here's the twist, here's what makes this so good. If you don't hydrate your skin enough after cleansing it, if you have oily skin, your skin's just going to go into overdrive mode and produce even more oil than you had to begin with. So by over nourishing my skin over time, it has become used to having a lot of oil in the skin and it does not produce nearly as much oil as it used to throughout the day. So by using a nourishing cream that would be considered too heavy for my skin, I've pretty much eliminated the oiliness of my skin, even though my skin is still oily. It's like medication. Think of it that way. If my skin is really irritated and red that day, I'll pat a soothing oil on top of everything. So this one is a chamomile oil and it actually, I can feel immediately the calmness that it's brought my face. It's incredible, it's wonderful. If you're somebody that wants to shave and wants to rid their face of their hair and you experience bumps and irritation, then this kind of soothing oil really, really helps to keep the skin smooth and supple and feeling really nice and feeling good about itself and it just, it's really helpful. So I pat that on top of my face, including the areas that are acne prone and the areas that are maybe irritated from razor burn because I still have not finished my laser treatments, so I'm still shaving. Moving on to the eyes, the, because the skin is so, so delicate, it's really important to hydrate the skin, and the problem with using a face cream around your eye is that, again, like I said earlier, the eye area is five times thinner than the rest of your face, so when you use a cream that's intended for skin five times thicker than your skin you're using it on, it's gonna not absorb properly, and what happens around the eye area is it sits on top of the skin and then you clog these little things around your eyes and it gives you these little white bumps below your eye. It's not harmful, it's not going to hurt you, it just isn't optimal and it's going to be something that you're going to usually want to counteract with another skincare product. So it's best to just start out using a gentle eye cream and then you can work your way up to heavier textures if you want to. I use a light gel around my eyes because my eyes usually don't need a lot of nourishment. I don't feel tight, I don't feel dry, I don't feel burning around my eyes, so a light gel eye cream is enough for me. That's it. Remember, everybody's skin's different, everybody's skin's gonna react differently to everything, but the bottom line is that everybody will benefit from a good cleansing routine, so it's important to get that down first. You can disregard everything else on the spectrum as long as you have a good cleansing routine and something to hydrate your skin. Those are the two most important things. Vanity Planet was was actually kind enough to provide me with a discount code for this wonderful Spin for Perfect Skin brush. So if you want, you can visit the description box. There will be a link towards their website um, where you will be able to get a, I believe, a 30% discount. If that's incorrect, I will flash it across the screen in bright red letters and you will know immediately. Alternatively, I believe you can also use a discount code called Spin with Steph um, on their website to get the same discount. I hope this has benefited your your, yourself and you've enriched your life in some way and I hope you've learned something. If you have any questions about skincare, anything I can help you with, please let me know in the comments. I will do my best to get to some of you. It's been wonderful seeing you again and until next time, just, you know, be cool, be chill, be yourself, be cool, breathe, everything's good, everything's cool. Bye, I love you so much, bye! Two bye, two bye. Oh no.